Hey, this is Black History Reconstructed. And on this story, we're talking about Allensworth, California. But before we get into today's story, let's talk about where we are today. It's August, some people might say it's Black August because of all the rebellions and uprisings throughout history. Throughout history, you had Nat Turner's Slave Rebellion, that happened in August. You had the Watts and New York riots in the 60s, that was in August, all the way up until today to Ferguson back in 2014, that also happened in August. But whenever they talk about Black communities on the news or in the media, they always like to point out Black on Black crime. Black on black crime, you can find it in almost any major city like Chicago, New York, or L.A. Who is killing these black victims? Not whites, not the police, but other blacks. But if we look into history, that wasn't the case. Black people were capable, and more often, what isn't really recognized throughout history is that we created successful black communities. In this episode, we're talking about Allensworth, California, which was one of the first in California that was a successful black community. In the early 1900s, we had many successful black towns that were created during America's most racialized time in history. After slavery and post reconstruction era, black men and women were struggling to find a place where they could just be themselves, work, start businesses without outside interference. It was the first community of its kind in California. This is amazing because in 1908, the government put in place a codified system of racial apartheid that dominated the Jim Crow South. The Southern legal system became an instrument of intimidation. Louisiana, Texas, South Carolina, Mississippi, and Florida passed laws that virtually prohibited freedmen from any work except as field hands. The laws were called Black Codes. The aim was slavery without the chain. Also, the Reconstruction Era was an attempt from the government to address and kind of help Black people as they transition from slavery. There were many programs created, the Freedmen's Bureau, but as you look into history, you'll see that these programs that were created and established during the Reconstruction era, era were later undermined. So the story of California's first black community starts with this founder, who the town is named after, Allen Allensworth. During this time, racism wasn't something he could just ignore. Today, we face a different form of racism, but in his day, fresh out of slavery and the Reconstruction era, Colonel Allen Allensworth, he confronted white supremacy head on with his idea of creating a all black community that would be safe from racism and segregation and just the violence and pressures of his day. After spending time in Los Angeles where he settled with his family, he witnessed segregation and racism and he decided to start his own town. Allen Allensworth was born into slavery in 1842. His mission to be more than a slave was evident from when he was a teen. Based on, you know, the story of when he escaped from slavery. Growing up as a kid in Kentucky, he saw Union soldiers marching through his town. He escaped slavery by joining the Union Army as a teen. So back to the community of Allensworth, California. How was it formed? I'm sure he didn't do it by himself. So Allensworth didn't start the town all by himself. While living in Southern California, he met William Payne, a gifted teacher. Both men wanted to attack white supremacy in the same way, and they had the same thoughts. The race needed to be self-sufficient all on its own. Both men were passionate about standing up to white supremacy. They knew the race had to become self-sufficient. So you might be asking, how did Allensworth come up with the idea to start his own town? He was heavily influenced by a statement made by Booker T. Washington that was published in the California Eagle. And it goes like this. Quit taking $5 buggy rides on $6 a week. 
Don't put a $5 hat on a five cent head. Get a bank account, get a home of your own. Joining Allen Allensworth and Payne were three other men, Dr. William H. Peck, an AME minister in Los Angeles, California, J.W. Palmer, a Nevada miner, and Harry Mitchell, a Los Angeles realtor. Now, one of Allensworth's main goals of this town was to identify a town site in the state of California where African Americans might start a new life together outside of the restrictions of the Jim Crow South and prove that African Americans can be self-sufficient on their own. But the economic engine of Allensworth was agriculture. A single community farm fed the town with plenty left over to export. People would come in on the railroad and they would see how things were going and then they said well if they can grow that there you know this looks like a pretty prosperous town so I'm not going to stay here. A couple things to mention during the heyday and while it was at its peak townspeople elected officers and held town meetings to encourage civic participation. So voting was a very prominent thing that was expected of all the residents. Allensworth quickly grew into an uncommonly industrious community. The town's businesses reportedly generated $5,000 each month, a princely sum by today's standards. At its peak, more than 300 African Americans called Allensworth home. There were farmers in Allensworth, but it was a business town. Um, there were two general stores, one large one. Uh, there was a drugstore, a barbershop, a uh, bakery, a uh, hotel. That was for the overnight uh, passengers off the train and, and the farmers that came in to uh, get their products to market. Education was a cornerstone of the town and was music. If you visit the town today, it's been preserved as a national historic um, park but you might see a lot of different instruments, mainly pianos, in some of the buildings that are still standing. In 1912, Allensworth became a voting precinct. It also had its own school district that encompassed 33 square miles. So with all this news of success of this town, you might ask yourself, what happened? So there were three main reasons of why this town pretty much, you might, you can't say it failed, but this is, but these were the downfalls of the town. So one, Alan Allensworth died while crossing the street. He was hit by a motorcyclist in 1914. A Santa Fe railway was moved to a nearby town and its water supply quickly dried up. So this is kind of a quick excerpt from a man that grew up in the town. He was about 10 years old while he lived there. Um, this is kind of an excerpt from a letter that he wrote. He says, wells ran dry canal waters were provided for other predominantly white towns nearby. The black dream of colonization was over, he wrote. Many gave up and moved away. Allensworth remains as a symbol to the world to prove that we as black folks could live successfully and economically and intellectually and have the right to self-representation. Here's a few clips of what the town looks like today. Um, like I said, it's a it's been preserved as a national historic park in California. You can go visit it right now if you want to. Some of the buildings have been restored. So this story basically points out that during some of the craziest times in America, we were able to create our own town. And this isn't the only town that was created during the early 1900s and late 1800s. Um, if you do the research, there's more towns and communities that were established predominantly for black people. Uh, you can check out Nicodemus, Kansas, in New York, Seneca Park, where modern day Central Park is located. Seneca Park was originally a black community before it was, um, before the land was taken and you know, the town was pretty much destroyed. So when you think of modern day successful communities, you can always point to Atlanta. Um, here in California, there are some places, uh, Baldwin Hills area. I'll highlight some of some other top 10 riches, more most prosperous black communities. I'll, I'll highlight them here in the video. Basically, don't believe the news. They're always talking about how black communities are distressed and poverty. There's always crime. Again, black on black crime. We know it's just a tool at this point and it's kind of a talking point that you know you might see on Fox or 
anybody just trying to use a talking point to point out how bad black communities are but we know otherwise based on this video and other black communities that were successful um, just hit up Google and just look up top 10 black successful communities or even on YouTube you can just type in top 10 richest black communities in the US and you'll be surprised what you see uh, thanks for joining me on another episode of black history reconstructed I'll be back with another episode I'm not sure what the next episode will highlight but we got more history to cover don't forget to subscribe join and hit the like button see you on the next episode